All right, guys. I just wanted to, I don't even know how to start this. Just thank you from around the world for all the love. Um, it's not been easy. And I'm speaking for more than just myself, obviously. During this, I guess I wanted to start up with some ASMR healing frequencies. Um, I don't know where to begin, you know. I have post finasteride syndrome, I guess. Um, to sum it up, right, if you guys have missed out, the Lion's Mane and the Scorilla Mind Shroom product is what I have now discovered as a potent 5AR inhibitor. Has you know, ruined my life, <laughs> to say it pretty simply, right? Um, I'll throw the first video up. I just wanted to again harp on like thank you for all the support. People called me, people made personal YouTube videos for me, people went out of their way, you know, psychiatrists, multiple doctors, and tons of individuals who have also suffered from post finasteride syndrome, post Accutane syndrome post-SSRI sexual dysfunction as well as AI abuse and this can also be caused by DECA. Um, DECA issues with DHN coming off of DHN back to DHT. There was a guy who came to me with that and it's been overwhelming, right? I had the post finasteride Foundation, the PFS Foundation reach out to me. I will be doing a interview with the head honcho to discuss what they're doing on a worldwide level in the medical professional world for this syndrome. And I'll just be, you know, doing my part and showcasing that this is not PFS, right? This is not fake. This is real. I'll describe it real quick if you guys have missed out on all the other videos and then I'll go into my updates on how I'm feeling. So I took the recommended dosage of this product which had 3.2 grams of lion's mane and gorilla shroom. There's tons of irony around this story. Absolute shit tons of fucking irony around this story. You know, this was going to be the first time I was ever posted ever on Gorilla Mind's Instagram after being an affiliate and then an ambassador. I guess my brownie points were on my way to an athlete. And I was super excited because I had the original bottle in there, but I used Gorilla Mind Shroom 1.0 religiously all the time. It was one of my favorite nuanced products that Derek did that I really found intriguing because I've <clears throat> because I've tried tons of psychedelics. I've done analogs of DMT. I've done magic mushrooms, multiple types, and I smoked a shit ton of weed. I haven't smoked a tiny bit fucking zip of weed since this happened to me but i used to smoke a ton and enjoy weed so the shroom 1.0 i used a lot I actually sold a lot of it and i had one of those popular videos reviewing it so i was super hyped that you know i got to have a slot finally on gorilla minds instagram and me tying brand association to them when i have been with gorilla mine for over four years, five years. Um, the Gorilla Mine athlete number one, I'm not gonna throw him in this video because he doesn't deserve any of the circulation around this video in a non-negative way, right? I don't want that to be spilled on him. He doesn't deserve it. I like him personally. But I was with that before. At the start, I have never really, you know, seen myself on the Instagram besides one story post, for example, like, you know, Young LA has reposted me on the story four or five times. Gorilla Mine, I think I'm going on twice in four years. So the irony around this is that that was going to be my first post and I was marketing this new product. Now, I decided to try the product at the full recommended dosage, even though I really didn't want to because, you know, I'm a man of my word. I like to test shit before I recommend it. And I took three capsules earlier in the day, 
felt like the normal shroom product and I crept up to the full dosage. Immediately upon getting to the full dosage, I was grabbing for my head in terror. Um, basically schizo-like symptoms. I could not sleep for nine days. I'm not going to repeat the same video. Um, my learning and everything was rapidly accelerated, but I couldn't sleep at all. I knew something was wrong. I suffered massive neurotransmitter death, and then upon like the ninth, tenth day, you know, I had full-blown castration. My dick felt like it was electrocuted. People know I'm known for my penis enlargement video content trying to help everyone get bigger, harder, stronger erections. And I documented my penis enlargement journey from like a little bit above, you know, six and a half to 8.2. It went from 8.2 to like 0.9 erect after being castrated, right? So the road to nine, here's another irony, the road to nine, I'm now, I was now like the road to point nine after this happened. And I can say that with a smile on my face because I've been suffering so long at this point that, you know, I'm not trying to uh, like soak in how fucking shitty this is, right? I'm just going to keep my mind not in that state because that will make everything worse as time goes on. So, right, I could not really talk could not walk right me and my girl would walk on the trail me super depersonalized and I tried to see if I was gonna recover you know pretty instantly right you know I've done a lot of shrooms in the past I've done shit tons of weed where I kind of fell off for one or two days rebounded back this sadly not the case actually it's opposite it got worse and worse and worse and that's where I decided to you know, make it public on the Instagram first, warning people that certain individuals will react to lines man like this, as well as I got on YouTube to make some of the only negative content on lines man that exists, as well as I got a hold of the lines man recovery Reddit owner, and the group has since grown to 200 to over 1,200 members since you know I've been involved, and it grew without me gaslighting it. Right, it was growing as I was getting ready to launch the videos with the Lion's Mane recovery guy. So, yeah, Lion's Mane is not safe for everyone at all, flat out. Sadly, I just got a call from a famous Polish influencer, and this is a woman who took it culinary. So, like, she ate Lion's Mane at a restaurant, and she is currently bedridden, and the call wasn't fun right she was like me had everything going for her. social media presence everything's going good she has a fiance about to get married now she's bedridden depersonalized and in terror right because I had about six panic attacks two that were like level 12 and when I mean level 12 I mean level 12 right I decided not to go to the emergency room during this because I thought that they could potentially make it worse or I thought that they could trigger a panic attack based on my mental state that would get me locked in the psych ward, thus throwing me down that road that I won't, don't want to go down. I began to recover. I began to recover as far as the extreme mental dysphoria. You know, there's euphoria and then there's dysphoria, as well as the early anhedonia was insane. So it was absolutely mind-boggling how shitty I felt. So this is where I had hope that I could recover around week five, week six. Things were looking good. As time went on, I started to realize that the original brain damage from the lion's mane is on its way out and that it triggered post-finasteride syndrome. I noticed all the telltale signs, right? I already talked about me going from an 8.2 inch dick, not bragging, to a 0.9 inch dick erect, and thus recovered to like a childlike state flaccid with a completely numb 7.5 to 7.6. I'm OCD about my penis enlargement content, but it did not fully recover. It looks damaged. It is discolored. It is cold to the touch. It is numb. Um, my orgasms, I do not feel at all. I do not enjoy sex. I have zero libido, zero sexual desire. Before this, I was hypersexual, making penis enlargement content, 
and have had a girlfriend for 10 years and have been very obviously active with her. And yeah, that's pretty much devastated that. So it is what it is, right? And as far as the side effects mentally go, I have extreme brain fog, extreme memory issues. I have trouble talking. You know, I'm trying to do this in one take. I don't want to make too many cuts. I already know that there are a couple cuts to make, but I'm really trying to spit this how it is. And let's get a little bit more healing frequency. So, I've swallowed the pill that I have PFS, and at first I was like, my grandmother's statue, I'm looking at it right now, you know, I'm like, why me? Everything was going good, I finally bought my house. Um, TMI, me and my girlfriend were not good last year, and it was a rough time, and everyone, you know, was pitching me towards leaving her, and you know, you only date your best friend, you only have one best friend one time. And I was sitting in there letting her burn me and I ended up saving her and it was pretty rough when we first moved into this house but I was actually very content and you know, I'm getting worked up. But I was glad that we kept through it and we were on our, you know, it was back to normal and yeah. Yeah, I bit this bullet and it's been very difficult. So I can't sleep right. I average like one to four hours, you know. I take sleeping shit, multiple sleeping drugs I rotate to try to not form a dependency, although it's been turning into a dependency right now. However, um, I do believe it will get better with time as well as I will be implementing an attempt to recover out of this which I will be bringing to fruition once I get everything together to do it but yeah the sleep has been horrible the thing I wanted to touch on the most is I lost my physique so I have not come off steroids at all I have started with one to two grams lasting testosterone a week I got weaker every time I went into the gym. I atrophied every single day. And I immediately dropped, I think I was like 240 something. I dropped to 220. Um, so that was like the peak of my genetics being fucked up, my epigenetics. So at the beginning where I couldn't really walk right or talk right, I plummeted down to 220. And immediately, you know, I did not miss a day in the fucking gym. I lifted every single day. <laughs> I remember picking up 20, 20 pound dumbbells, 25 pound dumbbells, and then feeling heavy as fuck. Um, I was struggling to incline the 100 pound dumbbells. Um, to put it that in perspective, I could do the 125s for sets of eight easily as if I was like throwing them through the ceiling. That is my normal strength threshold, even on a cruise. So again, my strength was cut in half and each day I would go to the gym. I had no motivation to go to the gym. I had no euphoria going into the gym. During the gym session, my dopamine signaling is not working, AKA I'm not feeling motivated. My mind is elsewhere. It is just sheer discipline at this point that is keeping me driven and focused on getting out of this. Um, I don't experience happiness or pleasure at all. It's very difficult to look at my girlfriend that I have a 10 year relationship and not feel that connection in her, you know, reassure me that it's there, but I don't feel it. It's been difficult to say the least. I don't wish this on anyone and I don't want anyone to fall into this hell. It's not fun, you know? In my opinion, you know, suffering builds character and it doesn't get worse than this. So I look forward to myself in the future. Nothing will phase me after this. Everything is taken right now. And like I said, I'm next to my grandmother's statue. I've prayed multiple times out here like why and to me 
You know, it just seems like I have to bring awareness to this issue. I was heartbroken time and time again from everyone reaching out with me with love, but also reaching out suffering with this shit not being recognized and YouTube channels personally dismissing this as nocebo effect or some bullshit, whatever the fuck, screaming at the camera. I'm dumbfounded. I'm not saying that finasteride or Accutane people do it without experiencing any side effects or SSSRIs. There are tons of people who use these drugs, compounds, and experience no side effects. There are people that use these drugs and then kill themselves after. They don't kill themselves because they have a little nocebo effect. Personally going through it and seeing the early stages that I got out of and that some people might not even make it out of those early stages. For example, my blood pressure was like stage three, stage four going into the gym and I knew my epigenetics were fucked up and that I had to suffer on the Stairmaster to try to cause BDNF you know, a BDNF raise and cause genetic transcription, epigenetic transcription to be exact, to try and undo some of the genes that were fucked up during the crash so I could get more stable, right? I knew that taking a break was the absolute worst decision with this and that I needed to create an environment where my epigenetics would change to a stable point. Now I'm at the point where I'm half castrated and it's going to be very hard to recover to 100% and I've read tons of reports but for everyone else suffering in this hell personally I feel for you and I hope that there are loved ones around you that support you and I hope that you discuss with someone you trust the magnitude of what you're dealing with and that it is understandable. The amount of people who have come to me that have tried to go through the Western medical system and it has basically laughed in their face is disheartening and the fact that they can't do anything. You know, my initial family, obviously very in shock, still very in shock, was very concerned upon me not really, you know, going to a PCP and going through the process. I can read online what happens when you go through the process and it's sad. Now the PFS Foundation and the PSSD Foundation, they're all fundraising projects and to me the PSSSD Foundation is not that well organized at all. Their funding should be like double what they are and the PFS Foundation is pretty damn close to getting grant money to do big projects and not really need fundraising money so I will put their link below. They're pretty close to a rodent model, which I was pretty excited with, and I'm going to feature one of the head honcho guys who has stepped up and has donated a part of his scrotum to research. This is all unscripted out of the heart. The irony's fucking insane, right? You know, <laughs> I'll laugh it off with you guys. It's like I did the penis enlargement content. I spread that out to help everyone get better in bed and now <laughs> I have a micro penis walking around. I have zero libido at all. I have zero sexual desire at all and it's like it's fucked up as far as like the color, the veins are changed. It's it's comical. It's comical that this happened to me. It's comical that my first ever post on the Gorilla Minds Instagram, I end up in this possibly permanent state and will definitely suffer for a much longer period of time even if I recover. So it's just like I don't think I ever would have took the full dosage unless I was going to market the product myself. And for everyone wondering the politics behind all of this, I know a lot of you guys have asked for statements and what certain people think. I will keep that private as of right now. I'm hoping, you know, I get a phone call. I'm hoping I do. But I'm completely, you know, I don't expect more, you know, personally. People expect more to, you know, just silence the point that this happened to me. I don't expect more in getting a phone call, but 
you know that's how the cookie crumbles and um how do, how do i say it players love you but they're money it's one of those things i just wanted to thank everyone and hopefully you stick with me I think another ironic part is that, you know, I'm the bodybuilder and the biohacker and I get tasked with the, I don't know, you guys can Google post-finasteride syndrome, it's uncurable. In my opinion, it is reversible, but it's very hard to do so and I will be making attempts. Um, I can't bodybuild at all. My physique is basically gone. I mean, this is the XL pump cover outfit. And I would have filled this out before this. And now it looks like I'm like picking the wrong sizes. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. I'm not doing better. I wish I came on and said I was. It's... I'm just emotionless about it. I don't know, you know, for me to get fed up at this point, at this point in my life, I'm, I've been a dead man walking. I'm supposed to be dead. So I get that I was placed to spread awareness and that this suffering will strengthen me in that. I just hope people don't experience this. That's it. I hope I hope those people who are on the edge of taking finasteride that if they did take finasteride and they took one single fucking pill and they ended up like this. I just got off the phone with an 18 year old who took one pill and is like this at 18. And it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. You know, at first in my younger years of biohacking, I thought that you know, I was led on to believe that PFS was kind of fake, that PFS that was, it was like, you know, they didn't know how to balance hormones and they took an anti-androgen and it's simple balancing of hormones. After blasting two grams of tests, recovering my DHT, using tons of DHT supplements, training like a motherfucker and shrinking and getting weaker every fucking week while not being able to sleep, not being able to have sex right, not being able to experience my orgasms, not even being able to feel the true authentic emotions and love from my mother and my girlfriend. I can tell you PFS is real and that it's not a nocebo effect. It's fucking brutal. It's hell on earth. And, you know, I just like I get a front row ticket every day I wake up. I have no motivation. I have none of that mental aggressive drive that got me to the point I am today at 26. I used to be full of energy, hyper-driven, bipolar-driven, and crazy motivated. I never wanted to take a break. I'm exhausted all the time. I do not feel like doing anything. I take naps during the day to try and recover more of my sleep to help my recovery in my sense. And there could be a thousand blood tests and there's everything cascaded and wrong from one smoking gun and we use it in programming, right? So I was a computer science and information systems major before I decided to chase my dreams, become a fitness YouTuber, biohacker, and aspiring bodybuilder that is now gone. And I look more like my long distance running self. I was a programmer. And when you run the debugger, the error is on this line, but the real smoking gun error is way higher up in the programming and the cascading errors brought it down to where the debugger found it. That is how I see PFS. I do see a carpet bomb approach to fixing myself, which I will reveal, and I will reveal the original creator of this protocol. I think you guys already know who it is, and I will give proper credit. I will not steal his work, and I will not take that work as mine. I will give him proper credit in a separate video, so please subscribe. Pray for me. I ask for everyone's prayers. I remember how devastated I was 
in the previous video. That was the video I put off making for a week, hoping I would get better and hoping I wouldn't have to make that video because I could barely talk on camera at that point. And I have obviously done my research that it was not just the line's main damage. I would say if you don't have PFS symptoms and suffer lines made damage, you could recover from one dosage if you're allergic, if you go brain dead from it, around two months, I would say. If you suffer PFS alongside it, which I did and which many people in the lines main recovery, and by PFS I mean any of these syndromes, Accutane, SSSRI, when the epigenetics get switched and fuck up your body, this is what I'm talking about. You know, it's it's just like, I had to swallow that. I got on camera, I said it how it is. It's still like it, it's actually worse. My blood pressure today was like, I'm not gonna say it, it was like still bad. And I have to switch blood pressure medications, but yeah, you know. I asked for everyone's prayers and I felt them. So I'm gonna ask again. I remember the day after I felt much better after getting that off my chest and moving forward with trying to recover and that everyone knew the boat I was in and everyone knew truly what was going on and honestly I felt better after everyone prayed for me that day and I appreciate everyone sticking around. I plan to avenge this and move on and bring you guys better content. I will continue with the education series. I obviously lost my physique. It looks like I don't fucking lift. I don't know what to do about that. I get weaker and weaker every time I go in the gym. I can't do volume. I can't feel my pump. I don't know if I'm going to tear my muscles or not. So that is not feasible right now. We'll see. Um, I plan to do the education series, clout stuff, and yeah, this is how the cookie crumbles, you know, this is how the cookie crumbles, I'm not, I'm not, you know, phased by being in the mud again, I've been shoved in the mud and told to get out myself already, and there's been a lot of support around me, and my audience has been more than, you know, supportive of this and realizes that I'm not being lazy. I didn't miss a day in the gym. I lifted every day. I'm actually binge eating food, believe it or not, and it's still hard to keep on weight. And I kind of look like, you know, the transition powerlifter person, you know? That's how I feel like I'm still strong. Like, I inclined the 110s for three. You know, I could do that naturally in like the fucking, you know, 12th, 11th grade, but, you know, I'm still stronger than a girl, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, you know. I just, like right now my mental perception is fucked up. Like I don't feel like a man. I feel castrated. Uh, my whole persona that's built on that, gone. And it's just been a hard pill to swallow, but I wanted to give everyone this. I will see you guys in my next video.